In this presentation, I will look deeper into the principles of earned value management. Earned value management is very important in project follow-up and it's being used more and more in projects. When we consider the project, we have to see how is our project doing financially. And let's first have a look at the project parameters. We have a project with a budget at completion of 200k. The duration of the project is 10 periods. And that's in fact the basic information that we have. To simplify everything, we consider that the cost changes linearly between zero and the 10 periods, so that we have a very simple relationship, very simple S-curve, which is basically a straight line. Based on this, we look at the situation on a certain moment. Here we look at period seven. At period seven, we expected to have a plan value of 140K. That's in fact what we expected to spend. We can calculate that linearly, uh, rule of three, 200 divided by 10 times seven is 140. And I see that point here on the graph. So this is our S-curve. Here I just put it horizontal because basically we're not spending anything anymore. So the cost doesn't increase, but of course, theoretically we expect that the project will be finished here. This is the actual cost. Now, when we look in a classical approach related to project management, people would say this is great because we're below the plan value, we're below the cost. Experience, however, has shown that this is not always correct. In most cases, it is not correct because we're forgetting some other parameter, the schedule. And typically what happened when everybody was euphoric because we were below budget, they tend to see at the end of the project that they were behind schedule and above project. Uh, sorry, above budget. Now what happened? Well, we forget to consider what work we actually did. And in earned value management, we add some additional parameter. The additional parameter is in fact earned value. And this is the cost of the deliverables that we created up to period seven. And we see on the table, we have only 100K of deliverables that we created. We planned to make deliverables for a value of 140K, but we didn't. Basically, this means that we are behind schedule. And this difference is the schedule variance. The second parameter that we have, and that's typically the parameter we've been using before, is the actual cost. And the actual cost here is 120. What can we conclude here? We can conclude, in fact, that we are behind schedule and we are above budget. The next step what we want to do is to find out what is the expected end date of the project using this method and secondly what is the expected budget of, at completion or the EAC expected at completion. What I did now is that I extended this trend of how much we spend over time or how many deliverables we create over time, I extended it till I intersect the BAC value, the budget at completion, because we continue working until all the deliverables are finished. Basically, when I create an earned value which is equal to the BAC, EV is equal to the BAC, it means that all the work has been completed. Now we want to know how many weeks, what are the periods. I look here at 14, but I can say that the relation of the EV with time EV is 100 divided by 7, or we have here 100 divided by 7 times the time. We want to find this equation. So this is in fact 
the relationship between earned value and the, uh, let's say, the time, multiply it with the time. So we want to say that this is equal to the BAC. So we follow here that the time is 14. We have to, BAC is 200. So we have T is equal to 200 times 7 divided by 100 is 14. So it's just a linear interpolation and we find the end time of the project. The next step is to do the same. We will inter interpolate this or extrapolate this value until we reach the end of the project and Doing that, we can find the estimate at completion. Now we apply the same principle to the actual cost. We extrapolate the actual cost starting from position 7, period 7. We use the same slope, the same proportion, and we continue working on the project until we reach the 14 periods. So we continue spending money at the same proportion as before and what we find out is what we can write as an equation and we can say that the cost or the actual cost is 120 divided by 7 times t. 120 divided by 7 is the slope of this red line. t is the period when we apply it in t. 120 divided by t times 7 is 120. That's the amount we started from. When we say we continue till period 14, we replace T by 14 and we see, well, it's times 2, so it's 240. So the estimate at completion using the earned value method will be, in this case, 240K. It's a very simple method to use. It becomes quite complex. There are a lot of formulas if you want to do all the calculations, but with this drawing you see what the principle is about. This was the end of this uh, presentation about earned value management. There will be other interesting presentations. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and bye-bye.